Hi there, welcome to the second video in my series on completing the square. Now I'm assuming that you have watched the first video and also are familiar with how we square a bracket out. Now for this video what I'm going to be looking at is where the first term here is a positive x squared term and it's more than one. So we've got four examples here and I'm going to take you through the first example and then encourage you to have a go at the last three. So when we've got something like this, we've got 3x squared minus 12x plus 5 and we've got to express it in this format. It's called completing the square. And what we do is that we take out whatever value we've got in front of the x squared term in front of a bracket and we look at pulling it out across the first two terms, the x squared term and the x term. So for this one we've got three bracket and then it's going to be x squared to give us 3x squared and then minus 4x to give us the minus 12x. And then we just put the last term down. So in this example, it's going to be plus 5. So in this example, I just pull out 2 across the first two terms here. It's not a common factor, but we force the 2 out the front. In this example, it'd be 2 again across these two terms. And in this example, it'd be 5 across these two terms. This is going to be a little harder to do. It's going to involve more complicated fractions. However, once we've done this, we then complete the square across these two terms here. So put the first term down, 3, and let's do a big square bracket now. And for completing the square across x squared minus 4x, we just put a bracket, we put a squared up there, we put the x at the front here, and we always halve the coefficient of x. Coefficient of x in this example is minus 4, so if you halve that, it's going to be minus 2. Now if you square the bracket out, as I said earlier, I'm assuming now that you're familiar with squaring brackets out, you're going to get x squared, which is that term there. You're going to get minus 2x minus another 2x, which is minus 4x, that's that term there but then you're going to get minus 2 all squared, which is plus 4. There is no plus 4 in x squared minus 4x, so what we do is we subtract it, and then close the bracket. So inside this square bracket, x minus 2 all squared minus 4 will expand out to give you just x squared minus 4x. And then we just put the plus 5 on the end. So what you do next is you just expand the square bracket. We've got two terms in here. And so we do 3 times the first term. That's 3 times x minus 2 all squared. Then 3 times the second term, 3 times minus 4, which is going to give us minus 12. And then it's just plus 5. And now we just group this up. We've got 3 times all of x minus 2 all squared, and then minus 12 plus 5 is going to be minus 7. So you can see we've got it in this format. If we were asked to state the values of a, b, and c, a would be 3, b would be minus 2, and c would be minus 7. OK, you might be confident enough to have a go at this one. It's just going to be a little harder than this one, but the principles are exactly the same. So I'll give you a moment then just to pause the video and try and have a go. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So with this one, all we do is we just pull out the 2. So pull out the 2 and then we'll have x squared. Then for the next term, it's going to be minus a half. 2 times minus a half, okay, would just give us the minus 1 at the front here. Don't forget the x though, okay? Close the bracket off and then put the last term down, minus 1. Then we complete the square across x squared minus a half x. So pull the 2 out, have a square bracket here, 
okay bracket in here where it's all squared put the x down at the front and remember now we halve the coefficient of x so we halve minus a half and that's going to be minus a quarter now if you square this out you'll get x squared first term here you'll get minus a quarter x minus another quarter x which is the minus half x and then you'll get minus a quarter all squared which is plus one sixteenth so we need to subtract that one sixteenth off okay and close the square bracket so that inside the square bracket when expanded will give us just x squared minus half x and then we've got the minus one on the end now we just expand the square bracket multiply the two terms in the bracket with the two so you're going to get two multiplied by x minus a quarter all squared now two times minus one sixteenth is two sixteenths or it reduces down to one eighth you can cancel the two into the sixteen giving us one eighth so you're going to get minus one eighth there we finished multiplying out the bracket so don't multiply that one with a two it's just going to be minus one and then finally cleaning this up we get two lots of x minus a quarter all squared and then minus one eighth minus one whole one it's minus one and one eighth but it's better to think of this as eight eighths and then you've got minus one eighth minus eight eighths which is minus nine eighths keep it top heavy there and again with this one a would be two b would be minus a quarter and c would be minus nine eighths okay well we've got two more examples here this one's fairly straightforward this one involves a lot more fractions but I'll give you a moment then just to pause the video and i'd strongly encourage you to have a go okay welcome back then if you had a go see how you got on so with this one all we do is we pull out two at the front of a bracket across these two terms these are nice terms because they're divisible by two so this is going to be a relatively easy example to do so you're going to have 2x squared plus 6x okay and then the minus 3 on the end now we complete the square then across x squared plus 6x so it's 2 have a square bracket there then we'll put a curved bracket here with the squared out there so you put an x at the front here half the coefficient of x so half of 6 is 3 so you're going to have plus 3 there expanding this out will give us x squared we'll get 3x plus another 3x which is 6x we'll have 3 squared which is 9 we need to subtract that off okay close the bracket there and then put the minus 3 on the end expand the bracket and we end up with two lots of x plus 3 all squared 2 times minus 9 is minus 18 and then the minus 3 on the end cleaning this up further gives us two lots of x plus 3 all squared and then minus 18 minus a further 3 is going to be minus 21 so nice and straightforward that one now with this next one okay we're going to have one that involves a lot more fractions we pull out the 5 have a bracket here it's going to be x squared and for this term here for 3x it's going to be 3 fifths x okay 5 times 3 fifths x the 5s would cancel just leaving you with 3x what we need there so close the bracket off and then we got the minus 2 so next put 5 out the front of a square bracket and inside here we'll have a curved bracket we're going to complete the square across x squared plus 3 fifths x so you put the x there now we've got to halve the coefficient of x so half of plus 3 fifths is going to be 3 tenths so it's going to be plus 3 over 10 okay half times 3 fifths just be 1 times 3 is 3 
and 2 times 5 is 10, 3 tenths. So squaring this out gives us the first term squared, x squared. We get 3 tenths x plus another 3 tenths x, which is the equivalent of 6 tenths x, which reduces to 3 fifths x. Then we've got this term squared, which is 9 over 100. 3 squared over 10 squared, 9 over 100. We take it away, so it's minus 9 over 100. Close the bracket, and then we've got the minus 2 on the end. So expand this bracket, and we've got 5 times all of x plus 3 tenths, all squared. 5 times minus 9 hundredths is 45 over 100, which reduces down to 9 over 20. It's much quicker though just to divide the 5 into the 100, it goes 20 times. So you end up with minus 9 over 20 there. And then you've got the minus 2 on the end. And finally, cleaning this up, we've got 5, big bracket there, x plus 3 tenths, all squared, and then I can think of the two whole ones here as 40 over 20. So you've got minus 9 twentieths minus 40 twentieths, which is minus 49 twentieths. It's much better writing that than minus 2 and 9 twentieths. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea then how we go about handling these type of quadratic expressions, where the x squared term then is positive and more than one. And in the next video in this series, I'll be looking at how we handle negative x squared terms. Okay?